set for the Dash for Cash this weekend. He's now out of that portion of the program, and that opens the door for Ryan Sieg. Yeah, and I was down in the garage area talking to Cowboy Starlin, who runs that team for the Siegs, and they're so excited to have this opportunity. Working hard on that race car, everything they have for simulation, any extra help, effort they can put into 39 car. He hopes to go up against Elliott Sadler, Justin Algar, and Brandon Jones and grab that $100,000. That would be huge, Adam, for that small team. What an upset that would be, huh, Regan? Well, that's right, and you guys hit on it, the highs and the lows, and it's certainly a high down here at Ryan Sieg's race car. These guys are excited, as Michael said, to race for that $100,000, and we can't, we got to remember that this is a small race team. $100,000 to this team can mean a lot more than what it could mean to the bigger team, so these guys are very focused this weekend on this race car, and they're pumped up. This is one of Ryan Sieg's best tracks. When I talked to the guys this morning, they said that they really think they can go out and, and compete for this $100,000. And, and this place, Regan, is not like Talladega or Daytona, but Dover is a wild card. Ryan has confidence here and oh boy what it would mean for that this is a group that has shown speed and here's a big thing for Hemrick started on the pole at Talladega that doesn't do him any good this weekend right wrong we pick pits here based on how they qualified last week that gives him the number one pit stall could be a difference maker if we have a, a late run to the pit lane tomorrow anytime they come to pit rain <laughs> pit road tomorrow it's going to be a difference maker because it's just that important this is the third narrowest pit road in all of nascar and if you get that first pit stall you can just jump right off pit road you can pass four or five cars martinsville's on that list and so is Indianapolis. I wouldn't have guessed that, but then you, you think, because it's so long, you, you kind of lose perspective on how narrow it is. A look here at Ryan Sieg. We said it earlier, eligible for the dash for cash. What a difference it would make for this race team if they were able to put a, another $100,000 in their pocket. And if they do win tomorrow, Michael, let's go to the party. It's, it's going to be <laughs> something, huh? Rod C, Cowboys Starlin, that's that's starting to set a pretty nice lineup for a good time. Yeah, with and I these say, guys. and I say if they win, they don't have to win the race; just have to finish the best of the dash for cash guys. That means in front of Brandon Jones, Elliott Sadler, Justin Allgaier. Cole Custer is now the quickest in practice, turned a lap of uh, 23 492, and there's another team that's that's had good speed early in the year. Oh, slipping up a little bit higher there, you see, Sieg, and that's that's what every driver wonders if you just get just above the, the tire tracks that you see, the, the darker rubber in the corners. What does the car do? Do you gain a little grip? Does it just lose grip? I think right now around the bottom is the fastest groove, but I, that's why Daniel Hemrick is up on top of that truck watching, just seeing who goes where, what moves work when you move around in that rubber that's on the road. Will the lane change as the, as the race goes on and do you have to, to move around to find speed at times here? Yeah, I talked to a couple of drivers and they say the darker it gets, the squishier maybe that rubber will be when it's down in the corner. When you find some fresh uh, concrete, maybe those tires will stick better. So they'll definitely wander around and everybody hoped for a wide racetrack so you can have plenty of room in the corners to pass. And the good news is Cup cars, Xfinity cars running the same tire. 25 cars have been out, 41 are here, and the question becomes, who's going to make a run? Because there are a number of drivers still trying to get through the inspection line. Here's a real upset potential coming later on. Ryan C. going for the dash for cash. There yeah, you see the red Xfinity stickers on his windshield and his red splitter down at the bottom of the front of the car. That means they're eligible, and their Lombard Brothers Gaming Camaro is in line to try to win a hundred grand and this team has just been such a great story over the over the last three or four years just gaining on it weekly um, it's the second time that this guy has been able to compete for the hundred thousand dollars and and I know that uh, Cowboy Starlin and that whole organization are very uh, happy and, and excited to be able to have a chance. Coming off their best run of the season, uh, Ryan was six last week at Talladega. In fact, all three of the cars from, from RSS finished in the top 13. J.J. Yaley was 11th. Jeff Green was 13th. Away, 23-18 for driver number seven. Ryan Sieg is also out there in the 39. His lap good enough for 11th. 19 of 24 cars have now there.
And I, I like that call. You know, you need an adjustment. You, you want to understand that you have enough. Be suspended indefinitely. That opened the door for one guy in particular who's making strides with his small team. After finishing sixth at Talladega last Saturday, Ryan Sieg is now eligible for the Dash for Cash $100,000 check. He's standing by now with Regan Smith. Well, that's right, Jamie. I'm here with Ryan Sieg right now. Ryan, how big of a deal would it be for this small team of yours? We've highlighted that you guys work hard every week. How big of a deal would it be to win that $100,000 for your team? Uh, it'd be huge to just put a little bit towards the, the race team and maybe me and uh, my dad and I, we could probably get something for ourselves, like a new Camaro or something like that. But uh, it's just great to be in the Xfinity Dash for Cash program and uh, can't thank them for doing it. And uh, just thank all of our sponsors that we have support us all year. He starts 13th today, Jamie. He has a best career finish at 13th here. He's looking for that $100,000 to help this team keep going. Thank you, Regan, and good luck to you. Restart after that early spin. And this, the battle for seventh on track. Jeb Burton in the three, the 22 of Austin Sendrick. And just behind them, trying to pull the upset in the dash for cash category, Ryan Sieg in the 39 looks good early. Great run for that family-owned team there. Ryan, he does a really good job. He's a hard driver. And he'll put himself in a good position by the end of this race. You watch. Yeah, he's lurking right there, Adam, up inside the top ten. He's running some good lap times right now. Once he got around Ty Dillon, or excuse me, the three Burton. of Jeb Burton. Cendric able to get by. Sieg is there, and here comes Reddit. One of the cars fastest cars on. on track. It's impressive. Ten green flag laps it took him to get in the top ten, Michael. And I, I just I just would watch him all day long. That kind of speed and that kind of traffic, it, yeah. the car's just going to handle better as he gets closer to the front. But if I'm back there, especially I think about Ryan Sieg, one of our Dash for Cash drivers back here in 13th, Come and get those four fresh Goodyear tires now. We're only going to go back racing with less than 10 laps to go in a stage and then stay out at the end of stage one. And, and I think about a guy like Matt Tift, who had yep. the early spin, lost track position his 18th. Even maybe Custer, Nemechek, and Bell, they haven't come through quite. So there was contact there with Ryan Sieg. He gets by. Majeski goes around, nowhere for Lupton to go. Yeah, he chose the bottom and it didn't work out. He came to the bottom, the 60 car just gets that momentum and you can't get